Hello, good day. How are you doing? I hope you're doing very well. This is Dr. Nambi and this week we're just going to be covering some health related topics and my number one topic on this series is basically how to become a medical doctor. As you may know, I am Dr. Nambi, a medical doctor by profession. So I just want to actually come in and tell you my journey on to how to become a medical doctor. So if you haven't subscribed on my YouTube channel, please hit the notification bell. Don't forget to subscribe and follow my journey and also be interactive as we speak um, all things related to health and i just still want to take this opportunity to thank each and everyone that has taken their time to you know um to be interactive and to engage in my content i appreciate you so let's go into our topic of how to become a medical doctor so a medical doctor is a course that you do in order to become a doctor by profession so a doctor means you have to treat sick people it depends what you want to focus on is it the pediatric or the babies is it the geriatrics or the older people or do you want to just become like me who is a general practitioner so general practitioner we see basically everything and you start with us we are the ones who refer you to the necessary departments that you need to go in so um so that's where I just said I need to come in before I start my health series. I just want to start here by also letting you know in case you are interested in taking up the course of being a medical doctor, at least you know what to look out for, how to prepare yourself and um, the steps that you need to take in order to make it as a medical doctor. So first of all, let's start with your schooling system. So your schooling system um, if you want to become a medical doctor, be, um, you need to be aware that there's certain subjects that they do um, prefer when you are doing medicine. So subjects like your science, your mathematics, science, I'm talking about biology, life science, physical science, um, your chemistry, those are the subjects that will get you into, you know, medicine. Obviously, the English language is very important, so don't forget also your English language and also, um, uh, med um, what is this one, computer skills is also very important. In today's world, like I said, you know, the world is changing so much, so um, being computer literate is also so very important important so while you are in school as a learner as a student please be mindful when you are choosing the course be mindful that you choose the course that will put you in the right spot so if you concentrate on your science subjects the chances of you getting into medicine is very high and remember this the competition especially your high school level is very wide you are competing with almost everybody in the whole world because there's people that want to come to south africa and do medicine in south africa so you are competing basically with the whole world and if you are competing with the whole world you need to make sure that your marks are up then your marks are extremely good because if your marks are not so good unfortunately you'll be in the last category whereby you might not be chosen you might be on a waiting list and there's a high chances that you might not even make it I know people that had to go through Bachelor of Science in order to make it into medicine. So please be aware of that when you're choosing your courses, you're choosing your subjects, um, whether you want to go from your Bachelor of Science to join medicine, just be careful that when you choose your subjects, choose subjects that you know it's what's, what's exactly being done with your medical you know, field. And that way you get a lot of advantage, you'll be exempted from certain subjects and you will be able to still you know, enjoy the same subjects that you were doing before. So basically that's it. As a student, make sure your marks are very good, make sure your subjects are subjects that we do in medi medicine, so your, uh, your science subjects, your mathematics, your English, and your computer is very important to get you into that medicine. So while you are a student, there's always an entry test. 
if you are coming outside South Africa, you will have to still sit for that examination test. They will just test you on everything from science, mathematics to English. And then once you've done that test, they will be able to, you know, like see how you did and be able to, you know, um, place you and you will be able to uh, be on a waiting list to be accepted in South African University. So you need to make sure that test you pass it. If um, I always say if you have your your, your your library, go to the library, uh, read your general chemistry, read your general, general physics or your general physical science, your biology, your English, because you're going to get almost all the questions being asked. And you need to pass that test because if you don't pass that test, unfortunately, your chances of getting into a South African university is very slim and slender. So make sure that you make sure that you pass that test. Once you are done with that test, they will also be able then to allow you to enter into any university that you choose. There's a lot of options. Me personally, coming from Namibia, um, my school where I used to be in Namibia was not... Um, a school that was recognized that from matric I could go immediately and do medicine. So I had to go and do pre-med, which I had to do two years at the University of Namibia. And then after two years, I came to South Africa and I had to do another six years. Actually, it was seven years because my first year, I didn't make it. I failed biology. So I had to do um, seven years in South Africa plus the two years in Namibia. In total, I did nine years just to become a medical doctor. So, and this is something that I always say, a lot of people might not tell you how long it, it, it takes. I remember when I was still young and I had those, you know, the dreams and the vision, I just wanted to become a doctor. I didn't even do my research. And basically also there was nobody to guide me. I didn't have a mentor. And I found it, I found out the hard way that basically, you know, you, you take long to just make it as a doctor. So imagine I took nine years just to qualify as a medical doctor. And in South Africa, where I'm based now, you still take two years as an intern. Um, during my times, I took two years as an, an intern. And I still took one year for community service. So basically, all in all, I took... 12 years just to be on the market as a medical doctor and an independent medical practitioner. So it's quite long. So before you even go into the journey of becoming a medical doctor, you know, there's certain things that, you know, it, you cannot have a normal social life. You can't really go out, socialize. You are always, most of the times, you know, in the books. Yes, you get weekends off that, you know, you can go and party and do all these things, but it's very difficult. And even relationship wise, it's very hard. It's very difficult because imagine most of the times you are not there and you find a partner that, you know, really wants to spend time with you and you are never there. So that can put a strain on your relationship and it can affect your relationship in so, so many ways. So it's very important to be mindful that, you know, when you are in that step, you will be, um, you will have to sacrifice. Your relationship might have to be put on hold so that you can be able, you know, to make it into, you know, a medical doctor. And you have to sacrifice basically even family time. There were functions I had to miss. There were funerals I had to miss because, you know, I had to be at school. And basically I didn't even have, you know, the capacity to, to allow me to come back and attend a funeral or a family gathering. So that's why it's very important before you even go into that, you know, field, you know what you are getting yourself into. So the first year... Basically, when you are on campus, you do also the basic, you know, um, basic subjects, your chemistry, your physics, your mathematics, your computer. And then the second quarter, you start to do your anatomy. And then from the second year, that's where you basically get to see a lot of, you know, your medical staffs. The first year, you still get to go to hospitals. You still go and, you know, see sisters doing ward rounds. You still get to see doctors doing ward rounds. But most of the times, you're really not really hands-on. You are just observing and seeing 
seeing what's happening. And the other thing is you still need to be registered with the health council as a student because there will be times that you need to go to the ward to do some work and things like that. So you need to be registered because you're going to go do practicals. And basically also coming to practicals, for us from University of Pretoria, from third year, we were already hands-on with your, your practicals. We had to go to the communities, do some community-based work and things like that. Document, you come back, and then they will assess you and grade you according to what you did in that community. And then when you are in fourth year, that's when we start to do your SIC, Student Internship Complex. So you are a student, but you are a student doctor. So you are like, you know, in charge of a lot of things. It feels so good because you have this badge now with your name on, send name on, and then it says student intern. So there's a lot of responsibility. You need to go for ward rounds. You need to prepare patients' results. You need to check patients. You need to study, draw bloods, everything. You need to do everything because when your reg will come or, or um, the doctor above you who is overseeing you, when they will come, they need to make sure that they find the bloods are ready, everything is ready. So, so with that in mind, most of the times you still don't have also a life. You are basically, you know, from school to the books, from books, you know, sometimes you even have to wake up as early as four o'clock, go and check your patient, make sure the patient slept well, everything is in place, your blood results are in place, your drip is running or your uh, infusion line is running, everything is ready for your uh, ward round at um, seven or eight o'clock. So you need to do a lot of preparation, a lot of hard work. You spend a lot of time in the library to study, to, you know, to just prepare yourself so that you can be a doctor. And basically there's a lot of exams. So your student internship complex with the University of Pretoria that I was at, we did it for two years. After two years, then you graduate, you become, yeah, a medical doctor <laughs> but you are still not off the hook and that's the three years i was talking about so you get to, to get um you get two years where you do your medical doctor internship complex so now you are not a student you are a doctor but you are under supervision you can still not be allowed to work on your own 100 percent there still has to be somebody to oversee you to make sure that you know you're doing the right thing you're not mistreating uh, patients misdiagnosing patients and things like that after you do that you are given one more year and then within that one year you basically go and do your community service you go to any village or any township that you want to go you go you do that one year internship and then once you are done if you want to specialize by then let's say you want to become a surgeon by profession so to become a surgeon if i'm correct i think you'll have to go another six years so it's 12 years plus another six years so that just discouraged me and I'm like, I'm not going back to study. I'm just going to do one or two, you know, small courses here, yeah, teach myself the basic things. And also that's where the journey of me being an entrepreneur came. And I'm like, I can't just be a doctor. I need to do also other things. So after that three years, you basically have the freedom to decide whether to go and open your own independent practice. You can work alone, you can ask your colleagues to join you and you can, you know, form a medical center or you can just, you know, um, go back to school and you become, uh, you, you, you start to specialize. So one day you can become a specialist and um, remember the specialties, they differ. There are some that can take up to two years. There are some for three years. There are some for four years for five and six years so it can take a, a, a long long time and there, there will also be a lot of sacrificing that you have to do in order to make it so some people also always ask me you know money wise how does it look money wise as a as a student um as a student um doctor we don't get paid. So for all the six or the seven years that you are studying, there's no money. You have to hustle your way to get those photocopies, to pay everything that you need to pay. But for doctors, 
in South Africa, you are not paid for whatever services that you are offering. But once you graduate and you become a medical intern, then you will be able to be eligible to get some money and your first year as a doctor in turn you can get ranging between 30,000 per month to 35,000 per month depends on which region you are based are you in the rural area because if you are in the rural area you do get rural allowance but if you are not in the rural area you are in the big cities you don't get all that you know allowances you might so you might even get below 30 grand and mind you, you're still doing overtime, you're still do working, you know, long, long, long hours. So sometimes when, you know, I mention the money, people get surprised and they think it's a lot of money. But it's not a lot of money. The sacrifice, the, you know, the pain that you go through, the counseling that you have to go through. You know, there are times whereby, you know, like I even say, you know, becoming a medical doctor is actually a calling because there's certain things that you yourself, you cannot solve. You have, you, you actually depend on the power from above to lead you, to guide you into the right choices. So it's not just going in there because you know, as a doctor you're gonna get that lump sum or that big amount of paycheck you need to have that patient from within to say you know what I'm there for you know to make a difference I'm there to help the people you know to get better you know to live a quality life to be you know excellent in their health you need to be willing to do that the money comes as a bonus so when you Think about that, then even if you work long hours and even though you don't have a family life, you don't have, you know, social life, it doesn't matter anymore because, you know, this is your calling. Trying to save a person's life is actually a calling and that's why you cherish it. So as you decide, maybe you want to go into this career path, I want you to think of that, that it's not all about the money. Yes, it's going to take you longer to become a medical doctor, but if you persevere, if, if you are persistent, you will be able to make it. The other thing, if you are hardworking, nothing can stop you. You put in extra work, your work will, you know, one day you will reap the results and you will also become a medical doctor. If I can become a medical doctor and I came from the ghetto, I came from where I didn't have much, my parents didn't have anything and I can dream and I could have that vision that one day I can, you know, be a medical doctor. What of you? So nothing should really be able to stop you if you want to become a medical doctor or anything that you want to become. So this is just my tips for those who want to um, know more about the journey of becoming a medical doctor, those who want to take the course of being a medical doctor. And so, yeah, basically, in short, that's about it. If you are interested, I know um, most of the universities, they are already open for online registrations. Go there and check for yourself and you will not be disappointed. And I'm wishing you all the best in your journey as you join the medical field. Dr. Nambi, thank you so much for joining me on this very informative, you know, video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on my YouTube channel because we're gonna be covering from this week forward, you know, health related, you know, topics. Thank you so much. I will see you. Bye.